Hello multi masterful malt manipulators and thank you to G DJ MJ Ryder for that malt mention. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy. It's all about whiskey. This is Ralphie Review 898 Extras in which having reviewed a whiskey I talk about stuff <coughs> related to whiskey and I'm going to talk about packaging and presentation of whiskey. I'm just going to give you my overall perspective on it because there's been an interesting development recently and I want to tell you about it uh, because it's a sign of the times and we're going to see more of it and frankly I think it's a good thing so I'm endorsing it. But first of all I'm going to have a wee sip of some 15 year old Tully Barden. added some water to this. It's made it such a more distinctive, interesting whiskey. Um, it's a big distillery. Generally their official bottlings tend to get lost on the shelves. And I think this is encouraged Tully Barden as they try and reach out to single malt drinkers to become more ambitious with their theatrical presentation of their brand. Now, all distillers do this. They want to sell their product using your eyes. And what you do is you look at the presentation of a whiskey and you get seduced by the theatre of not just the shape of the bottle and the weight of the glass and the fanciness of the cork and the beautifully contoured colours and schematic designs of the labels and all the singularity and individuality of the fonts that they use and the colour contrasts and all these little devices which distillers use to try and make their product stand out on a shelf full of all the other whiskies. And there's quite a skill to it. Um, some distilleries go lo-fi presentation, like Laphroaig is a good example. They go for that black and white thing, that monotone, and they can do that successfully because they're selling a very distinctive style of whisky which has no equal or relative parallel. It is a very TCP medicinal style of heavily peated whiskey and when you just see that word Laphroaig then the, all the message jumps out from that, that the, the, the font. That's all you need to know and it's, it's a strong strong identity because the contents of the bottle are strong strong flavours. But there's other brands like Tully Barden which they're not particularly distinct if you were to sit down, a, sit down a glass in front of somebody who had even a few years experience, they'd really be struggling to recognise it as a Tully Barton. It's simply not particularly distinct and furthermore, they don't really do a peated version um, or maybe a triple distilled version to create a more interesting permutation of the theme. So what they've got is heavy presentation. And this is designed to theatrically present the luxury of what they're selling. So you have um, the kind of glossy, highlighted, textural cover. So you have a certain amount of tactile going on when you pick up the box. It's a slightly larger box than is required and is necessary for the bottle so it appears to be bigger than it actually is. There's a fair amount of glass in the bottle so you're getting a bit of weight in the carton and that adds to the illusion of quality. That adds to the theatre of expectations and particularly when you're an inexperienced whiskey drinker you're going to be sold on that and as soon as you taste 
the whiskey you're going to say well I saw the label I saw the box I felt the weight of the bottle I heard the cock coming off and it's not a screw top and it's not a plain label therefore it must be good and generally this formula works for the majority of whiskey bottlers single malt bottlers and when you open it up you've got another little bit of added theatre here because you've got a kind of picture frame right round the the central plastic label so as you open it it sort of catches and then releases and inside you have this with plenty of space around it you have this bottle with textured label so that it's a little bit raised in the name and on the age and it's got the kind of gold thing going on it a little bit of um, embossment on the glass as well and you lift the bottle out and there's a fair weight to the bottle you can see all that glass on the on the bottom of the bottle um, which just adds to the weight rather than the necessary function of the container but before I go any further I just want to say a hundred percent of this bottle is recyclable you can finish this bottle of whiskey and you could put this bottle in a bottle bank and glass is one of the most easily recyclable commodities used for packaging quite simply it can be ground down in a machine and used for repairing roads very effectively or for surfacing roads because glass comes from stone comes from sand and the paper very little waste in the paper I mean slightly embossed but there's actually a very tiny point point two point zero two five percent of the actual presentation is actually the paper and the label and you've got the cork it's got a wooden stopper biodegradable cork biodegradable literally you could throw this in your compost heap and it'll rot down eventually you've also got probably the least recyclable part is the zinc and tin foil but there's very little of it and if you want you can remove it smelt it down and turn it into ornaments and candlesticks if you really want to I mean some people do that but by and large the most wasteful part of this presentation is actually the box and it's adding it depends what kind of whiskey drinker you are if you are a high spending informed whiskey drinker who is buying for the primary purpose of smell and taste and by the way that's a very swiftly growing minority very very important minority particularly in times of global pan global um, inflation and depression in earnings you know the dedicated high spending minority whiskey buyer is a f increasingly a force to be reckoned with and very very important part of the the customer market but this is a bit of a turn off because the informed whiskey drinker is saying right what am I going to do with this carton after I finish the bottle burn it if I keep it what am I going to keep it for it's not do I store pencils in it well I've got plenty of other whiskey containers I can do that with that look a bit more attractive so inevitably this is going to be put in the bin or it's going to be burnt in a fire bit of a waste really particularly when these good solid cardboard containers particularly when they're coated with plastic they're not immediately biodegradable you can't just throw this in your compost heap and recycle it so in fact a much simpler container would be absolutely fine for Tully Barden considering its price point and its place in the pecking order of single malts which is frankly fairly modest really very modest it's down there with Fetakim and Tamnavulan I'm just saying as it is and it's a turn off to whiskey buyers 
They're saying, I'm looking at a fancy container, fancy packaging. Now, fair enough. If it's a 30-year-old whiskey and they're asking $100,000 for it because it's so rare and there's only 15 bottles. You know, they can get away with that because it, they need the bling in Dubai Airport or Los Angeles Airport or Shanghai Airport or wherever they're selling it. Or in some of the high-end um, outlets in major cities where that over-the-top bling really matters and presentations is everything and they're taking a leaf out of the cognac industry and the way they go over the top with their bottles. And it's relatively successful for them. But that's fine for a, a very, very expensive whiskey, which very, very few people are going to buy. But for a relatively standard gift whiskey, it's clearly viewed as adding unnecessary layers to the cost. And worse than that, then obviously they're going to try and offset the cost of putting the product in the market to pay for the fancy container, they're going to downgrade the caliber of whiskey that they're bottling, either by diluting it further, same 46 to 43 or 40 percent, adding some caramel toasters to emphasize the theater of, oh, it's a darker color, it must be better, and she'll filtering it so it looks all nice and blingy. Um, Springbank have now gone public with the idea of removing containers altogether, getting rid of them. And I absolutely commend Springbank yet again, they're first off the block with the integrity of seeing the way things are going. Sure, but here's a distillery which will sell every single bottle they produce in a very short space of time. And other distilleries are looking on, scratching their head and saying, how do they do it? How does Springbank sell all their whiskey so fast at whatever price the, the retailer's gonna charge? It's simple. It's the integrity of presentation and the calibre and quality of production. It's not rocket science. It's very simple and straightforward. And every and any other distillery producing any spirit in the world has now seriously got to look at bringing just one version of their product. All it needs is just one Incy, wincy, tiny, whiny, little limited edition version of their product to market just in a bottle. Best quality, smell and taste, higher strength, natural integrity present presentation and watch it fly off the shelf. If you're in any doubt, ask Ferta Kern how they've been getting on with their warehouse series of single malt whiskey, considering they're a very un overrated, well, they're a, they're a brand which has been of very little interest to single malt drinkers for quite a long time. What have they done? Simples. They've upped the calibre of presentation. They've put the bottle out there and the internet, not advertising, not traditional marketing, not the expensive way of promoting your brand, but the cheapest chips free way of promoting your brand. Just put good stuff out there and let the internet Malt mates find it and then they will surely let people know about it. How, how long will that take? A month? No. Weeks? No, not really. Days? Probably. Hours? Yeah. Minutes? We're down to minutes now. Someone can buy an integrity bottling of whiskey and within a minute they post it on Reddit, Instagram, 
do a video about it. And literally within minutes, <coughs> 10,000 people will know about it. And these 10,000 people are big whiskey buyers. And they're seeing something that's getting talked about. And what do they want to do? They want to know it's why it's being talked about. And they go out and they buy a bottle. Because you can now literally go out one buy within within seconds. Seconds because of the internet. You can go and buy a bottle. In less than a minute. On the internet. Which retailer? Which venue will I go to? Who's still got the bottle? Right, I'll go there. Order in. Just one bottle. Maybe I'll buy two if I can buy two, unless it's restricted to one per customer. That's how fast good whiskey is flying off the shelf. Why? Because the demand for it. And people are not fooled by the theatre and the flannel of over-the-top price-loading presentation which is designed for the consumer who is fickle and spoiled for choice and just waiting and waiting for the big discounts on Amazon and in Tesco and some of the bigger online retailers if they've even got that far. That's a sign of the times. And see this phenomenon, malt mates, because we're all part of it. It's going to get even faster. It's going to get more dynamic. It's, getting going, it's going to get more impactful because that's the way things are going. And Springbank is going to have their single malt with its simple label, simple bottle, simple practical presentation, low cost, big impact. And people are going to say, do you know what? Springbank are showing environmental integrity. And that's even more of a reason to buy into that brand. Because they're not pitching and charging you for the flannel of the theatre of the presentation which is designed to coax and nudge and encourage the consumer, the passive consumer, who is 10% influenced by the fancy box and 90% influenced by the fact that there's a £25 discount on the product just before the end of the year. Even more if they waive their supermarket loyalty card. I found it a bit frustrating about how slowly the whisky industry reacts to the changing market. But I've got such a totally different perspective here in the Bothy, getting this global overview through all the analytics I get in, not just Google analytics from YouTube, but also the other stat counter analytics. That's another good platform that gives me all the view of Who's looking at the videos? What are trending? What's the traffic? What are people probably buying as a result? And then I reach out to the, to the retailers and I just ask a few simple questions. I only, I only need to ask a maximum of three questions to any retailer to find out what's not selling and what is selling and how fast. The, the impact of the internet is so dramatic. Any distillery who is not honestly engaging with their customers beyond marketing, and this is so important, is cut away. You don't need all the theater of a slick marketing conversation with professional production values. All you do is you get a member of staff who actually, actually makes the damn stuff. 
and you sit them down and they talk about what they made, they talk about their job, they talk about they were checking the casks last week, the casks came in from such and such a place, they get so many casks and how they think it's going to influence the whiskey and what do they think of the whiskey they've just bottled that's gone out as an integrity presentation and they're just sitting there chatting to the, a, a mobile device. You don't even need cameras anymore. They're just chatting to the mobile device, even live streaming. Distillers, be more confident and just be yourself. The less marketing you can be, the more effective you deliver your message as you go. It's a phenomenon, right? And your marketing team won't tell you this. They don't want you to know this, distillers. It's called clo close contact connectivity, right? Close contact connectivity, CCC. And it's what happens when a producer of a product cuts out all the layers in between and goes straight to the customer and speaks directly to the customer in the language with a conversation that they know the customer wants to hear because the customers told them so. It's not rocket science. It's really, really simple. Whew. This is whiskey's greatly improving. And it's a sign to me that if it was more integrity bottling, it would be so much better than it already is, but it's showing what it can be. But it's chill filtered. Why? Well, there's two markets, two whiskey markets. There's the integrity market and there's the passive consumer market. And distillers, they're not the same. Don't treat them the same because you're just losing sales. And now, at the end of 2021, is not a good time to be losing sales. Seriously. I'm Rafi. Bye.